girl, Kimberly Jessica, reporting in live today on iHeartRadio. And I am here with uh, some information as we go further with the Paul Mitchell saga. I had the misfortune. Uh, let, I'm going to break down some information to you that's really crucial in this whole Paul Mitchell thing. Paul Mitchell's school is an energy. It's a frequency of just pure wickedness. When I say wickedness, I mean from condoning racism to betraying inner betrayal to gossip, trouble, whoremongering, uh, just, you know, just gender disrespect. Um, but the biggest thing that I've noticed in the pushback is the issues around the black woman here. I want to explain something to you guys. Um, first of all, I'm coming to you in many hats. Um, I've spoken to some of the women that have come forward and stated that they were injured by Paul Mitchell. Within the 150 messages plus that I sat back and I watched these girls just go on and on, I found a lot of the information just going out into the left field. It was just unnecessary. Um, you know, it made me pull back and ask a serious question of, do I really want to be with a group or do I want to go off to my own space and just deal with my specific issue and let that be that? And here's why. Dealing with a group, you're always going to deal with gossip. Gossip is something that it just, it's wildfire. It cannot be controlled. In the beauty industry, when I was looking at some of these messages and some of the stuff that I've witnessed, a lot of these girls that are screaming that they were discriminated against, they're just angry people. They were, nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened. They were just trying to find somewhere to rant and rant and rant. When I witnessed some of these rants go from, um, you know, from being, you know, emotional abuse at home, physical abuse. Now, this is not taking away from anything. This is really looking at where in here does this have to do with anything? In my specific situation, I had teachers that were absolutely 100% unprofessional. They also invoked students to pick and riled up and start trouble. One teacher in particular was Mike Burt. He riled up Zuri Rosales. When I tried to explain to this group that Zuri Rosales was one of the main people that was wickedly, blatantly, violently racist towards my hair. It was blatant, y'all. It wasn't even some people. She came from her station and came into my mirror with another student to assault my hair. And then her friends started clapping wildly like they were super happy that someone said something about the one black girl's hair on the floor. But the women that have come forward are Zuri's friends. It's a conflict of interest. I cannot, in good faith, recommend those women to be in any form of a lawsuit against Paul Mitchell because Zuri and Mike Burt created an environment of darkness, unfairness, and evil. And those girls looked up to Zuri. So when it was time for me to come forward about my Zuri situation, which was connected to Mike Burt, they turned like snakes. They are with her. I cannot in good faith say that I'm going to help these women. I literally watched them destroy and implode. I watched Zuri's friends come into my private text message to tell me, mind you, they weren't there, that Zuri did nothing wrong. And mind you, 
I'm a victim just like them. But they tried to put an ageism on me that when I responded in kind to their disrespect, I'm supposed to be the bigger person. I'm so, no, you don't get to use my high values against me when it's time to hold you accountable for your behavior. This whole thing with Paul Mitchell comes down to taking responsibility for your actions. When you blame people for your issues and you have no emotional control, no filter, and you expect a person to be your slave, set up meetings for lawyers, introduce you to people, put life into you, sweetie, I'm a victim just like you are. What the fuck do you, what do you, really, what do you want from me? Are you serious? So I can only tell my story up to Mike. If it comes out of Mike and it's one of the students that were with Mike, then they will become the darkest people that you will ever meet. Some of their stories and their claims are ridiculous. They had in the text message, uh, some clown that was a teacher and how he smelled and going on and on about a teacher that was violated and beaten by her man. They made fun of the teacher that was domestically violated upon by her husband and said that she was lying and fake and that her bruises were fake. How cruel and wicked can you be to make fun of another woman, whether it's a teacher or not? And they blamed her for their her own issues and said that she stole money from them. When I was listening to these women, I'm saying to myself, what am I hearing? You just said you were okay with a teacher that was domestic violence. You just said to me when none of them were there that Zuri, who is the biggest troublemaker, did nothing to me. They then started finding excuses, even the black women. Black women, you know, they expect me, I'm a womanist, okay? I'm a womanist, which is a little different from a feminist. They're the same group, but it's a little bit different. And I'll go into what a womanist later on. Right now, I really want to stay on track. They even tried to make me responsible to just let them air out and just throw all their shit on the wall as if I'm supposed to put up with that. There's no way that I would put up with that. So just be aware. I'm not going to say their names, but it's a group of them. One of them even came into the school with their grandmother. She's, uh, listen, she's more, she was just more interested in getting into it with the school than she was really interested in getting what she needed. She has a crew with her. Very disrespectful. I mean, it was just, it turned out to be just more of a hateful, gossiping, angry group of women. Now, I'm not saying that something didn't happen. Something definitely happened. But what I'm saying is that it's hard to sift through that when they are bullies themselves. They are bullies. There's a few girls out of the group that were kind and decent girls. And I, you know, one of them, her father died and the other one uh, was, was trying to get moving into a new, a new establishment, a new place. So she was really, they were really focused on their real life issues. And I really hope that those couple of girls, I won't say their names, but they're amazing. Black women, you are so used to being abused and disrespected, and you've been taught to love your oppressor. And so therefore, it's easy for you to hang with a group of girls that identify as black, but they don't have hair like a black woman. They're mixed, or there is a black diaspora in there with something else. Um, and it's not to take away from their blackness, but you don't have the same issue that I do. I can only speak to my specific issue. Those were one of the few women that were actually defending Zuri and Ali and then throwing in the mix. We're black too. I can't tell. 
not with your behavior. If you really cared about black women's hair, you would have stood your ground, but instead you jumped in the mix and became abusive and violent within the capacity of the person or the people that were sent to help you. So Paul Mitchell is a dumpster school. The owner, Peggy, is a dumpster woman. Her values are dumpster. And so therefore, all she attracts into that school are dumpster teachers and dumpster students. These students, when I tell you, they took joy in violating the black woman's hair. The ones that I was talking to in the messages are hella racist. I had a message filled with white, Caucasian, maybe one Caucasian, a lot of Spanish and the re another set of mix. And then there were just brown, black girls, black girls, just without any mixture to them. The anger that came off of those girls when I called Zuri out, they didn't care what Zuri did. They were more concerned that I called her out. They did not care that her friend Allie came and told me to leave her friend alone. She did nothing to me. They cared how I responded. So they're manipulators. They will use anything you say and do. So you have to put them on blast. You have to let the world know you guys are coming forward and stating that Paul Mitchell did all these things to you, but you can't even unite and stand as a integrity of one. They only want to talk about their bullshit hours that, They've been out of the school for years, some of them, a year, some of them. They got their graduation. They graduated, but they're still talking about their bullshit hours. They shouldn't be in a group of women that were actually traumatized by Paul Mitchell. Even some of the ones that were traumatized turn out to be just simply worthless duds. They started joining with the other women that cared that we called out Zuri Rosales. So Zuri Rosales and then you have Ali are the two that made it their business to jump in inboxes or jump in faces, unprovoked. I knew when I saw Ali's name, her name is Ali, when I saw her in the group, it's a girl that I barely spoke to because I knew that she was a troublemaker. She was always running her mouth. She, I didn't even know her and she had ran up in my face to tell me how horrible the school was and how horrible Mike was and how horrible Judy was. And while she was right, she was absolutely right. But Allie herself is a liar and a troublemaker. And that's my experience with her. So therefore, in my opinion, I can't, it just takes away from anything. Zuri is a little bit older. She should be ashamed of herself. She carries herself in a, just a very disrespectful way, just flying off the handle. And I think that they thought that I, because of my age, you see the age discrimination is real, that I should have shut, I, I should just shut the fuck up, be extra nice and be Mother Teresa. Get the fuck out of here. Ain't no way. Okay. There is no way I'm not going to be the bigger person. If you come over here with your bullshit and your disrespect, I'm going to handle you right where you are because I have my own issues to deal with and I'm not going to be the bigger person. You want me to be the bigger person so that you can get away with talking shit and that's just not going to happen. So get that through your thick skull, whether I'm 65, whether I'm 55, 35, 15 or 20, fuck you. If you think that I'm going to sit back and let you talk shit to me or disrespect me, and I'm going to sit back and just be the bigger fucking person and shut the fuck up. That's not going to happen. Okay. So you can kiss my ass with that one. Okay. As clear as day. So before you guys go out there and try to make a fool out of Paul Mitchell, make sure that your shit is together because you chicks are scandalous and your shit's fucked up, and it's hosed up. You guys need to get your shit together. Really do some integrity searching, okay? Ask yourself, why would you be friends with somebody that is so racist and that could come after a black woman so blatantly in front of you? Ask yourself about your true values, and don't try to pick apart me busting your ass verbally for talking shit to me. 
Um, that's just not going to happen. I stand my ground and you can kiss my ass. I owe no one anything. I owe myself. Now, I am not for every woman. If you're a piece of shit female and you like starting trouble and you lie a lot, fuck you. Stay away from me. I'm not going to even tolerate that. Are you insane? I'm not going to be a womanist for her. I'm not a fucking slave. If you're a woman that has integrity and respect and really want to get to the issue of it and understand that racism and diverse and diversity goes much further than skin deep and stand for really what's right and go forward and hail, hold Paul Mitchell accountable for their shit, holler at me. If you want to come to me with gossip and bullshit and lies and back and forth and jump in and, and, and just all kinds of bullshit, nosy bullying, no, you know, you, you, half of you, your lives are so fucked up outside of that school. What you need to be focusing on is not that I told a bitch that I don't get along with and that I owe nothing to, to eat shit and die. That's a slang that we've been saying since the eighties, do the right thing from that, from even the movie, uh, with Morgan Friedman. I don't even remember the name. Um, it's, it's from 89. Uh, Morgan Friedman was the principal of the school and he had said a few things. Uh, I don't have to do shit, but stay black and die. He said a few things. And then there's slangs like eat shit and die because I threw a bitch out of my inbox that should have never been in my inbox to tell me that her friend did nothing wrong. And you want to make deal admit, you want to dictate to me how I respond to a bitch that I don't know. And I don't give a fuck about. And that was disrespectful. You don't get to dictate to me how I responded to Ali and Surrey's bullshit. They both can eat shit and die. I don't give a fuck about you. You came to me with that black girl shit. And then you did that shit all through Paul Mitchell's school. And you want to dictate to me how I responded to my enemies? This is how deranged they are. They're so they're, they they're filled with so much hatred and rage that they can't even see that Ali imploded the whole fucking thing. She imploded the whole thing. When I saw her name in the text message, I knew that it was going to end because Ali. I knew that Ali was a troublemaker. I knew that. I knew that she was a gossiper and I knew that she was a troublemaker. And I knew that I never spoke to her. Next thing I know, as soon as Zuri, we call Zuri out. She jumped in my text message. I told her eat shit and die. Instead of them correcting their friend and saying, yo, you shouldn't say anything to her. You tried to correct me for telling her to eat shit and die. You don't get to dictate to me how I respond to my enemies. Kiss my ass. What fucking planet are you from, sweetie? They don't do that here. Well, I don't at least. I don't know where they do it at. They just, we just don't do it here. So if you extinct, I'm going to shut the fuck up. And supposed to hold a higher ground when I'm a victim just like you. You guys came to me and jumped in my phone. So when I read these messages, not only towards me, but just towards domestic violence and other women, just the horrible things that they said about a woman that was sleeping in her car. The teacher was sleeping in her car. They said her bruises from her man were fake, horrible things. I said, these women are horrible. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. So there's more going on. Uh, we're going to be interviewing some other people. Just be careful. You know, you, you just got to be careful who you align yourself with. I've been running podcasts, radio stations, media for almost 25 years. I even had the chicks that were born in like 2002 trying to tell me the laws of the radio and what we can and can't say. This is a chick that has no other education other than you just finished hair school. You have no education in media. You don't know how it works. You barely finished hair school and you barely have clients. Instead of trying to sue Paul Mitchell, what you should be focusing on is going get, get getting mental health help. Go find a therapist. Go do some yoga. Go get into therapy or a woman's group. Join Alcoholics Anonymous. Join Drugs uh, um, Anonymous. There are major 
serious issues that are more pressing than gossiping about what Paul Mitchell did with your hours. This is for people that were really harmed. This is for people that were really harmed. Real victims, not people that are bullies. We don't want you. We don't want you. We don't want you. If you're a bully, you don't we you don't we don't want you. If you're you have mental health issues and you're not on some sort of medication or getting yourself help and you're doing the whole, you know, transference thing and and doing the whole projection thing, we can't I, we're not in a capacity. We're already injured. We're not in a capacity to to take on your shit. So a lot of these girls, they have more pressing issues to take care of than to be arguing with somebody that's already established and has resources and has their shit together. They couldn't even get their times right when it was time to get on the phone with the attorney. And then some of them started talking about murder and stuff. I'm like, get your shit together. Get your shit together. Before you try and come after Paul Mitchell, because some of y'all just sound like you're just mad and, and just got an attitude. Some of you may be legitimate, but you don't know what loyalty is. You just know how to run on your emotions and make these crazy emotional decisions in a very rigid setting that we need to have our stuff focused. You said, don't focus on the students. Absolutely. I'm going to focus on the fucking students that the teacher set off. So it's it within my parameter. They tried to like dictate who I could and could not call out. If you're a teacher and you set a student on me, I'm going to put the student on blast. I'm going to put the teacher on blast. You don't get to tell me to, sh you don't get to shut me up. That's not, that's what's not going to happen. And as a result of that, I can promise you half of them are just going to go back to just running their mouths. Like they always did. They just, I, I should just put on the song big mouth by Houdini in the eighties. You got a big mouth. You just run in your mouth. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. The rest the, the other few girls that I mentioned, I'll never mention their names because I don't believe in mentioning any type of victims names, but I will call out the behavior that tried to come into our peripheral vision and destroy our focus. They're not gonna get anywhere because even in the beginning, there was a young girl where, you know, the teacher absolutely did something to her, but she started picking fights with the other woman that was actually there to have her back. And she did it publicly and disrespectfully. So therefore, Mike, who's an Asian and the Spanish people and all of them, they see the way blacks turn on each other so publicly and violently in less than 20 seconds. So that gives them the right, they feel, to treat us any old way because we have no solidarity. No solidarity. So for that type of black woman, I'm not for you. I'm not with you and I'm not down with you and I don't want you in anything that has anything to do with me. I'm calling people out because I'm tired of your shit and I'm not gonna protect you. By all means, it wouldn't be a good idea to come for me. It just would not be a good idea. This it's You're gonna lose. I have my shit together. You don't. I, I, if I could just read some of the messages, Krusty the Clown, I mean, the gossip was just 150 messages of gossiping. Gossiping. Dude, we have real life issues here of like sexual harassment and making fun of hair and racial discrimination. You chicks are talking about what? And then one after another, the messages were just disrespectful. I was like, you bitches are insane. Oh my God, you could, yes, you are a bitch. Yes, you are insane. You just sat here and said that it was, a teacher was lying about being, I think they even put up pictures of her bruises. Like this is so deep. Like, that's just cruel. It's cruel. Me standing up for myself is never cruel. If you come to me with a sledgehammer, don't be surprised. Like Sean Connery said, why would you bring a knife to a gunfight? Now, I'm not saying I'm going to shoot anybody because I ain't, that ain't even me. I'm saying don't fuck yourself up coming for me because I'm not going to take it. I don't give a damn what you expect from me. 
you come for me. It's this simple. It's this simple. I don't know what the big fucking deal is. It's real simple. You come for me, it's curtains. Get your shit together. Get your paperwork in order. Get you a therapist. Because no one is going to put up with all that noise. It was like just, they were just throwing all their shit out. And what they expect is for people to put up with their shit. They're not there to get help. They want you to put up with their shit. And that's what's not going to happen. And that's why a lot of them don't have any jobs. A lot of them, um, you know, don't even, they, they can't even get a client. It's like, dude, focus on really focus. You got other things. The last thing you need to be doing is fighting with me or any other woman that comes forward. It's not just me. It's other women too. Cause you're killing their story. You're destroying their desire to get justice because you're fucked up. So you're not invited and we don't want you. We don't even want to be affiliated. It's an embarrassment. We're only for the woman that wants what's good. And that really has been harmed and can respect each other's story. You don't get to diminish aspects of my fucking story because it doesn't agree with your narrative. It's like a man rapes a woman and his, and his friend comes and says, why are you telling people my friend raped you? He did not do that. Who the fuck do you think you are? She jumped and said, my friend didn't do that to you. We're graduates. I can tell that this is the only thing they've ever graduated from because they love throwing that around. If you're so fucking high, mighty, and powerful graduate, why are you in my text message looking for my help since you're such a fucking high-powered graduate? Why? Because you came to snoop and kill the mission. So I'm a womanist, but I'm also big into self-preservation. I'm going to always take care of me first. They say it best on the airplane. Take your mask, put it on for yourself first, then help those around you. If those around you are being piece of shit people, drop those fucks where they are. Leave them where they are. But don't expect me to be fucking poly purebred. I'm over 50 and I don't have to fucking answer to anyone. Needless you. You see what I'm saying? Especially not you. But good luck with that, though. Good luck with that. All right, y'all. I'll be back.